Okay, guys, that's pretty well it. I just wanted to go over a few things about this uh, material. <clears throat> what I used for all this white plastic, that's just cutting board material. I bought two cutting boards, they're about seven bucks each. Uh, this stuff here is HDPE and it's one inch thick. 
I got it from the Amendable store, but I bet you could probably find a one inch thick or even a three quarter inch thick uh, cutting board somewhere as well. And this stuff here is aluminum tubing, which has a one inch OD. So that means you need something to slide into this at about seven eighths. So what I found worked the best is <coughs> actually uh, conduits, electrical conduit has a 7 8 OD so that worked out good and it's just a gear clamp here. I put <coughs> a little slit in the aluminum as you can see right there so you can tighten this up with the gear clamp and it tight tightens up pretty good. Alright <coughs> so a quick overview on how this camera stabilizer works. Hey, so there's basically two important features that a camera stabilizer has to have. And one is the adjustability for different weight cameras so that you can get it balanced. So you need lots of adjustments in your mounting plate. That's why there's all these holes up top so you can mount your camera in different spots. And also the adjustability with the sliding rod here to move and to get your weight in and out and lots of options there as well. Um, the other important part of a camera stabilization is a frictionless gimbal. So that's why it's all bearings. There's bearings here, here, and here to get it as frictionless as possible. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results of this. I've played around with this for a little while now and it seems to work good. So uh, you wouldn't be able to get away with any kind of bushing or anything though. You, you definitely need bearings. So how this works, as you can see, if I let go of this right now, is not balanced at all. So to balance it, the first thing you want to do is do this drop test. And it should take somewhere between two and three seconds for it to fall, which I'm a little bit slow. I got a couple weights on here already, so I think all I need to do is just extend my pull down a little bit. And that will speed up the drop. So I extended my pull down a little bit and you can see that drops down quite a bit quicker now. That might even be a little bit too much. I think that's all right actually. It should be about two seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand. So that's good there. Now as you can see we are tipped very far back. So to adjust that we're going to have to bring the camera forward. So I loosen up the locking screw and push it forward some, lock it back in place, and that's actually not too bad. So now we look at it this way, you can see we're leaning this way hard, so we need to bring our pull over this way. Oh, sorry, the other way. So, you know, that looks pretty straight there. And we're pretty straight there. This way here, if, if anything you wanted it, the camera tilting down a little bit. I find it's just easier to keep stuff in, in frame if you're just tilted slightly down. So that's it, it's all balanced. Too. You can see the camera stays nice and level. Anyway guys, I know that was a really quick overview on how this thing works. I think I might do a follow-up video with a little bit more information on this. So if you like this project, please uh, comment, like it, subscribe.